Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to be doing gradient maps for today's tutorial on one of my best photography shots from DragonCon 2014 this year. So, if you're just finding my channel for the first time, I usually do Photoshop CC tutorial videos on Thursdays. In the case of this tutorial, you don't need Photoshop CC to follow along. You can use any modern version of Photoshop and that will work out just fine. So let me go ahead and show you um, an example of a gradient map effect. In this case, we're using one of the standard default gradient maps that um, you know comes along, which is blue, red, and yellow. And you can see that gives us this nice visual effect. And when we add our other adjustment layers, it really comes out to be uh, something special. And I might just pull this effect back a little bit. Yeah, that looks better. So that's what you'll want to do is you'll want to have something like this and you can change the uh, gradient map to any of the other settings that are along here and you'll get varying different results this is a great way to just create a whole new look and to see what works for your things now obviously not every gradient map will work and in some cases some of it will be a matter of the blend modes that you're using. I prefer to use uh, multiply, overlay, soft light, hard light, and screen, just depending on what it is. And sometimes I'll use uh, hue or color. And you can see that these all have varying different results associated with them. So you get a lot of different combinations, a lot of different looks, different things that you can do. And you can also create your own custom gradient map if you don't like the colors that they've chosen for you. And you could really just experiment and get all types of looks. You know, um, there's not really a, a right or wrong to this. It just depends on what type of look you want to create for your particular image and what you think works well with it. Uh, there are some things that are obviously just not going to look good. So in many cases, you'll want to go ahead and stick with these overall defaults. Now, in order to see what's going to work in terms of the blend modes, you'll just want to play with them. We can use this overlay blend mode, and really that does a nice effect on the overall image. Uh, so it is soft light, which gets things just a little brighter. Hard light. Linear light doesn't really work out well for it. And the other thing is you'll probably want to, for these effects, set your opacity to something like 50%. You can change your opacity and you'll get um, different results based on that. For example, using um, the orange and purple, we can use color and we can get this really um, interesting kind of old-fashioned sepia look. So that's kind of cool. But we could tone it back and really just make some of the color pop. If we don't, you can see that, okay, that still looks really good, but it's not nearly as interesting as if we do something like this and make it very stylized. So that's just an option that's there. So by combining the gradient map, the opacity, and adjusting the different types of blend modes, you can create all kinds of interesting looks and effects for your photo and really just bring out the best of it. You can also use the masking capabilities to uh, affect this as well. Another trick that I use in some of my photo manipulations is I'll use a gradient map to affect the overall contrast. And part of the way I do that is I'll go ahead and I'll do a black and white gradient map and I'll set it to overlay. And that will really pop the contrast on a photo very nicely as you can see. So if I pull it back, that looks considerably more flat. But then when I do this, it really pops. You can also use multiple gradient maps to um, create interesting effects because let's say that I like the contrast that's creating, but I want it to still have, um, you know, that nice hue that we had over before. So what I can do is I can just turn down the opacity on that and I can just slowly bring it to, you know, something that I want and maybe I use color instead. Yeah, color's working better in this case. So now I get the balance of having the overlay beneath it that you know creates all of that contrast that I want. And then I have this to affect the overall color wash. And then I could just adjust the blend modes or the opacity as I need to to really make those work well in combination. And as I said before, 
if you don't like um, having the effect on all of the image, you can click on the mask, you can go ahead and select a black brush, and you can just turn that down. And in this case, let's say 60% opacity because I still want some of it. I'll go ahead and I'll just paint around the area of his coat and get some of that more royal blue back that I might want. And I'll still keep the overall effect on everything else. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this Photoshop CC tutorial video on gradient maps. I hope you learned something new from it. If you like this video, don't forget to like it. If you have questions about how I did this technique or suggestions for other Photoshop tutorials that I can do, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other videos on my channel. And as always, thanks for watching.